enemy. Welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Casual with your boy, Bass the Kid. This is almost kind of like a weekend rap as well, and it's fitting that this is happening over the weekend as I've decided to bring back what was at one time a um, bit of a fan favorite, it was highly requested, you know, the dressing gown or what did they call it, the bathrobe, I think some people used to call it, especially the Americans, um, yeah, but new year, new new dressing gown in it, so without further ado, let's kind of get into what happened overall, um, we'll talk about the, the Showtime card, to its credit, it was actually a little better than I was expecting it to be. Um, I didn't put out the, uh, you know, basis picks and prediction. I just didn't think it was necessary. Kind of thought it was a foregone conclusion. There may be one coming up this week, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into just what happened uh, in the fight card. So I say this with absolutely no disrespect meant to Demetrius Andrade, but that's the only fight I didn't stay up to watch and what I mean by that is I was watching it when it first started I fell asleep at some point I think I tried to rewind it after the event possibly and then I fell asleep again then I had some things to do and I felt the other fights on the cards were more important to watch so I haven't got an opinion on it I know he went the distance, I know he won quite wide. Apparently he got dropped in the fourth or the fifth round, um, but it wasn't scored a knockdown by the ref. But I know he dropped um, Demon Nicholson twice in the fight as well. So, I mean, is it a good debut at 168? I'm not sure. Um, it's just really unfortunate that for all the talk of, you know, the Canelos and, you know, being above uh, Yanni Beck and you know above fighting Zach Parker for 150k which okay I understand that one you know going from 1.2 million to 150,000 is a bit of a piss take but um, did you get 150,000 to fight Demon Nicholson on an undercard as opposed to you know coming to the UK and being in the main event if you did fair enough but something tells me you didn't so you know, and then that would have had you as the interim champ. Even if you didn't get to fight Canelo, you still would have been guaranteed a title shot. Whether he, you know, whether he vacated or, you know, you got to fight him, you would have had the opportunity then and there, unquestionably, to be a three division champion. So, you know, there's a lot of questionable business decisions there. Um, but I'll leave it at that. Again, this is all about the fight. I didn't see the fight, but I mean, he won. So he's still undefeated. So hopefully uh, this can move him on to bigger and better things. Although it was only a one fight deal he's got at the PBC. So it's not even like they're guaranteeing to build up to a fight with someone else. He's now he's back to being a free agent. So, you know, hopefully he can get another fight in soon because he needs to be active. But yeah, that's what it is, I suppose. Now, Speedy Rashidi Ellis against Romain Villa. Now, I didn't know much about Villa before, to be totally honest with you. He hasn't fought much, um, you know, sort of outside of Venezuela from what I could see, um, you know, and sort of some of the surrounding South American countries. So I didn't really have a much of a sample size, but I know enough of, um, you know, Rashidi Ellis to know that he's a, you know, he's been a top talent. Not the hardest puncher, but very good movement, um, good technique, fundamentals, like everything there is just, you know, is a really good slick boxer that can box and move and can also stand and trade if he really has to. Now, I'm going to be totally honest. I think I, I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm not going to call it a robbery because at this point it's literally like what you like and sort of, I guess, there were certain things that Villa was doing in that fight which could give the perception that he was controlling the pace and that he was on top and you know he was basically doing a lot better than he was but he didn't win that fight even with the two knockdowns in the 12th round um, Rashidi Ellis dominated the first six rounds and he still won comfortably minimum two of the last six uh, but I had it nine rounds to three. 
So I gave him the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I gave Via the seventh. I gave Rashidi the eighth. And I gave him the ninth. I gave Via the tenth. I gave Rashidi the eleventh. And then I gave Via obviously the twelfth. And minus the two points for knockdown. That's a 115-111 card. Um, I don't see how you can give Via any more than four rounds in the fight. And then you know, if you take, if you minus two points off those four rounds as well, then that's just simply a 114-112 scorecard to Rashidi Ellis. So I do think it's hard done by, but there were several rounds where it looked as if he was throwing stuff and it was, you know, it was catching, it was doing its work, but it wasn't. Like you could clearly see that the shots were being avoided, they were being blocked, or, you know, or he was slipping and moving, or he was just making them miss. Um, he did a lot of good body work towards the second half of the fight and that's what started to pay dividends um you know obviously with Rashidi tiring out a little bit and i could kind of tell the rounds that they were giving to via it's the ones where all of a sudden he started sort of stepping in and clinching you know because that's initiating that, okay you're kind of being hurt so the other guy must be doing some good work uh, towards you so i can see that's probably where they were giving him certain rounds but Prior to the 12th, just looking at the scorecards of how they came in of 113, 113, and then two 114, 112s, basically means that one, one of the judges had it 7 5 to Rashidi Ellis, but the other two judges um, in the 11th round actually had it 6 rounds to 5 to Rashidi Ellis. So if Via had of um, won the 12th without the knockdowns, it would have only been a majority decision draw. Ellis would have got one on the scorecards and the other two would have been draws. So again, I don't know what six rounds the judges saw for Villa, uh, but I guess what Ellis said he wants that rematch straight away. Villa said he'll, he'll do the rematch. I don't know if it will happen. I don't know if it will happen in any, you know, real quick speed. You know, it's his PBC we're talking about. But that being said, if it does happen, I do expect Ellis to make a few adjustments and maybe, you know, right that wrong. Same way Jamel Charlo did with Tony Harrison and, you know, to a lesser extent with Brian Castano. Um, but no, it was it was a good fight though. That's one thing I will say. It was it was surprisingly more entertaining than I thought it would be. So yeah, hope they do run that one back. Now, the fight that probably surprised me the most on this card was Jaron Boots Ennis versus Kevin uh, Chukatsian. Uh, now, the reason it surprised me is not necessarily that um, Boots didn't get the knockout because I kind of thought that I've seen Chukatsian a couple times and that he's a bit, you know, he's a, he can be not so much a negative, but he, he can, you know, he can nullify work. I know he's got a strong chin. I've seen him take shots before. So, you know, I know that he's not necessarily, um, you know, just going to will at this at this first sign of power. But just the fact that Boots was having issues even being able to hit on the move, you know, to cut the ring to you know pivot with his opponent when his opponent was pivoting you know sort of digging digging in harder shots to the body you know against while you're while you're actually sidestepping to stop the guy from being able to exit out because Chikatsium wasn't even it's not even like he was bouncing around just running all over the ring a lot of the time he was actually staying within range and just shifting his feet slightly or or angle in his body just in a way to stop the shot from being able to be thrown at a certain trajectory and nullifying the shots it was just weird to see someone as lauded as Boots is um, not be able to effectively work better than he did now yes he won the fight quite clearly but even to if I'm gonna be honest the 120 108 scorecards across the board I didn't think was correct there was a couple rounds in there that I definitely feel you could say that Chikatsuyan won um, based off of effective defense and cleaner shots um, or more or more effective shots or more effective shot selections in those rounds. Not, not many, like, you know, two, maybe three at the most. But I, I definitely think there was two rounds he won, so I thought it was a bit unfair to a one a 120-108 scorecard. But this goes to show two things. Number one, um, Boots isn't the out and out killer 
that a lot of people lured him to be or I could say that I say or it could be or and it could be I it could be in addition to the fact that he needs to be active um, just looking at him and looking at the kind of guy he is being in the kind of rhythm he has to be and plus the fact he's such a big 147 he's the kind of guy that has to stay in the gym stay ready and probably if he has more actual fights throughout the year that's going to mean he has less gym wars and that's one thing I feel like he's been in the gym too much maybe over the last year just having mad sparring sessions and stuff which you know you can kind of see it didn't necessarily look that fresh um you know and this you know he's a 24 year old so you definitely need to maybe limit the amount of gym wars and just start working on more of the technical stuff which he's pretty much got to a t at this point so yeah it was a bit like i said it wasn't the greatest but overall it was it was adequate but definitely unflattering and i hope he can get back into the ring really soon to you know get everyone back on board that hype train regardless of who he has to fight next but that also being said you know Karen Chukatsian you know he did what he needed to do as well so I think he'll actually get quite a bit of work off of that um, from other people who maybe aren't looking for the strongest puncher but someone that can take their guy around so we'll see what happens moving forward but it was a, it was a good one I've nonetheless disappointing but good in the other way that makes any sense and last but not least when it comes to the showtime card obviously you had Javante Tank Davis versus Hector Luis Garcia and you know what it was an interesting fight it was quite entertaining um, first couple of rounds were very slow it sort of picked up from the third and then continued that momentum through to the eighth even when there was inexplicably um, you know a fight happening in the crowd which I've seen on a several occasions fights happening in the crowd there's was, there was a couple of Queensbury ones um, last year I remember happened uh, I've seen it I've seen it at, I've been at matchroom shows where that's happened um, but I've never seen it necessarily like where the two fighters in the ring want to stop fighting and watch what's going on in the in the like, I've never seen that and one thing I've noticed about Javante Davis in his last four fights and I'm not saying I watched them religiously, but I'm pretty sure he wasn't doing this earlier on in fights, but he'll he'll be in there boxing. All of a sudden, he'll turn his attention away from who he's boxing to either talk to the ref or talk down to his coach or used to talk to Floyd. And I'm just like, st keep your eyes on the person in front of you because all it takes for you to do that one time, and I swear, no, and I remember there was one time he'd done that and he got caught, he got hit. I can't remember which fight it was. He turned, he turned, and he got hit by somebody. Um, I can't remember who it was. And, um, it's not important who it was, but the fact is, it happened. And it's like you need to keep you need to keep your attention on the ring. It's a very bad habit he's got, and I don't know if it's uh, you know if it's an ADHD type thing. I don't know if it's you know maybe it's something that recently he's just you know he gets bored too quickly nowadays because he's not actually boxing he's just waiting for one shot so he's to keep himself motivated he just has to distract himself i don't know but it's a very bad habit um if he fights an actual puncher doing that like it could be it could be problems like for instance if it was a ryan garcia that could definitely be problems although to be fair ryan isn't a person that he's not a come forward type fighter he wants to lure you onto shots so he'll just sort of stand stand there so when javante is turning turning and looking to someone else ryan won't really do anything he want he wants you to throw first so that he can counter you um but yeah that's a very bad habit that aside, he put he put together some good combinations, but as always, like Tank is not boxing the way he used to box. He everyone's talking, oh, he wants to feel this person's power, feel that person's power. No, he's just getting hit. His defense isn't as great as people think it is. Um, his movement isn't as isn't as fluid as it used to be. Now, part of that just could be because he's you know he's campaigning at 135 he went up to 140 he's gone to 135 he was a 126 starting he's a 130 pounder so maybe just the agility and the mobility isn't the same maybe the gas tank isn't where it used to be who knows but it's just a case of 
he gets hit. He yes, he he finds a target, but again, he's fighting people for the most part that either are not punchers, are not from the division that he's fighting in. You know, so they're very, so they're undersized or they're very flat-footed, and he's just able to sort of work in and around them. Now he's got power, he's got skills, he is talented. I'm not saying he's not, but. I can see him getting found out very soon when he takes those steps to the to the to the you know the other top dogs. Because at the moment, I guess we got we we'll call him the money guy rather than the top dog. He's the money guy, yeah. But when he steps to the top dogs in the division, that's when I think we're gonna see him get found out at this point. Because a lot of those bad habits that he's that I'm seeing in this fight have been seeing them for the last few fights, um, probably since the Leo Santa Cruz one. Before that, he was he was a lot more neat and tidy. Now, again, the same the same things are happening over and over again. And again, when you go into these bad habits, it's very hard to unlearn them, and it's very hard to sh uh, shake out of them. So, yeah. Um, but I mean, he did what he needed to do. You know, he apparently hit Hector so hard he shut off half his brain. He couldn't see out of one eye for you know half of the round or whatever. So. You know, but Hector, it doesn't, the loss doesn't actually hurt him. It probably does him some good because he showed that he was in there against a guy that's, you know, fighting a bigger weight class than him. He's still a champion down at 130. So he's going to go back down there. He can, you know, have a couple of defenses of that title, maybe even unify if, uh, you know, PBC get the act together. Who knows? Um, but overall, it's no harm, no foul for him. Um, Javante, you know, I mean, he's got some issues. That are about to come up which i don't really want to talk about but you know we'll we'll see uh what happens there um but yeah let me leave that alone now for the you know for the recap stuff i don't think there was anything else that's happened over the weekend i particularly want to talk about um a couple of announcements so this week coming i just want to let you know um i'm going to try and put out there will definitely be a video on wednesday i'm not sure what what it will be yet there will definitely be uh, basis picks for um, Stephen Shaw and F.A. Jagba and Guido Vianello and Johnny Rice and that card. Uh, the KSI and stuff, you know, I might talk about it, but I don't know when that video is going to drop. Uh, it might be Friday. Uh, there's a potential I could be traveling on, on Friday. Um, or it might be Thursday, or I might have to do two videos back to back, forget the weigh-ins and just put that and do that video on the Wednesday and maybe just set it to upload later on in the week. Um, for those who don't know, um, like next week, like my birthday takes place that week, so I will potentially be away, which means I may not have time to, you know, uh, drop any new content uh, especially up until s Sunday you might get a, you might get a weekend wrap on Sunday but that would probably be the the majority uh, but you will see me on the breakdown I'll be on the breakdown Tuesday night 9 p.m. with Tony's Pugilist boy um, I will likely make an appearance on Monday Night Smoke uh, tomorrow uh, but yeah uh, anything to do with with my channel there will definitely be one video on Wednesday Hopefully a second one, and then maybe a weekend wrap. But there won't be there won't be a huge amount of uh, of content, unfortunately. But yeah, um, please like and subscribe, share with a friend, share with a colleague, share with a, a relative, an associate, anyone else in between. Um, and yeah, let's uh, kick 2023 off right. So thank you very much for watching. For right now, hardcore casual, out.